Hello everybody, uh, today I wanted to go over some of the things that we bought, uh, accessories for our new Winnebago Micro Mini 2100BH travel trailer. We got uh, things to allow us to do dry camping and full hookups, so some of these purchases or items may not apply to you, um, but we're going to showcase them all here today. So we'll start over here uh, with the generators. I spent a lot of time going over the different generator options and um, it came down to one of two ways. I, I was really looking at the Champion 3400, it's a very well reviewed generator. It's just kind of big and at about 100 pounds, a little unwieldy. Um, I decided to go with two smaller generators that you see here. These are the Champion Dual Fuel 2500 watt and you'll see the parallel kit there. That allows me to basically tie them together and turn this into a 5000 watt generator if I want or I can run just a single generator for auxiliary electronics. If you're running the AC, you're going to have to have both. The benefit of these is they're a little quieter, they're definitely lighter, and it's a little easier to mount them and carry them on this trailer. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. These tanks are actually the original uh, 20 pound tanks that came with the trailer. I upgraded that and I'll show you that in a second. So I went ahead and took the old uh, 20 pound tanks and I mounted them in the uh, rear activity hatch by where the hookups are. I'll show you all here in a second. Uh, for tables, we really went back and forth all over the place with the tables. And I landed on this one uh, because they're, they're pretty full size. It's a five foot table. The weight capacity on these, it's, I forget, several hundred pounds. They're, they're very solid. Um, the only issue is that they're wider than the 24 inches that allows uh, the, the pass-through storage. So let me show you the, the little trick that I do. So if you come over here, you won't be able to fit this this way, and that might discourage you from buying it. But all you got to do is kind of come in at an angle. And you want to be careful because you don't want to rub up on those seals too much. Um, but it should fit right in. And that's how you get them in there. Uh, you can also see we got this little uh, Cuisine Guard gas grill. It seems like a great product. It's well reviewed on Amazon, so we're hoping that pans out for us. We got the hose to be able to hook it up to a 20 pound bottle rather than the one pound disposable bottles. Um, these chairs here, we picked them up um, at Academy, although you can buy a similar style of one just about everywhere. What we really like is the hard armrests. Um, instead of the, the kind of floppy ones that flare out, this allows you to get closer to somebody and in a small table that's, that's critical. The other thing is it clears the table so you can actually get really close and eat comfortably. Um, so that's something pretty big for us. Now I talked about mounting the generators earlier. This is what I came up with. Uh, a friend and I fabricated these aluminum brackets and alternatively what I could have done was buy a bracket that bolts onto the rear bumper and has a basket out here. And some of those products may advertise up to 100 pounds and that's where I started was you know, I'll get the, the Champion 3400 watt generator with, you know, it's 100 pounds, I can get it on this basket. But from everything I read, you're really not supposed to be loading these um, a whole bunch. They're, they're held by thin walled welds over here. And, you know, I went back and forth with the vendor and it, it seems like they're capable of 90 pounds. Now this had the spare tire mounted onto it, which is about 50 pounds. I took that off. Um, we built these brackets. The generators are advertised to be about 37 pounds each. I haven't weighed them, but Assuming that that's accurate, the, the generators and all this hardware combined are less than 90 pounds. And I like it because they're narrow, you can get really close to the, to the trailer, and some of that weight, about half of that weight, is directly onto the bumper. You're not, you're not bending it away. Now what I did was I slipped in a little bit of foam right there so that it doesn't hit the trailer, and then I put some little rubber isolation mounts here and down below just to not scratch up um, the trailer. In the future, I'll probably powder coat or hard anodize these just to make them look a little nicer and, and match the overall look of the trailer. But I'm really loving this. Um, the, other, the other reason I did this was that by upgrading the tanks, which I'll show you here in a second, I ended up with a lot of weight up front and it, it exceeded what the car was able to do. So by putting a little bit of weight in the rear, this helped balance the, the weight. Uh, I'm still keeping the 11 to 15% recommended total weight on the tongue, but I was able to, to remove almost a hundred pounds by, by putting the generators and the propane tanks in the back. So here you'll see these are the, the kids, the kids' chairs and table. This is, you know, we got this for them. We got some little ones. You may not have little ones, but uh, these little camping chairs for them. This allows them to, you know, kind of do their own thing and not bother some of the adults at, at dinner time. Over here you'll see, so that spare tire that I took off the rear bumper, you'll see it hanging below the trailer. What I did was I got a piece of Unistrut. This is the 36 inch piece of Unistrut. And I put in a couple of self-tapping screws, just one on each side. It doesn't need much because that self-tapping screw is just sort of, it's not really holding much. It's just keeping the unit strut from sliding around. There's pieces of off-thread that go through the unit strut 
and that goes into the tire through where the lug nuts go and it gets tightened down. So that, that's really what's holding it down. It's the, the half inch all thread that, it, you know, it's really holding it. it it's sandwiching the, the frame of the trailer, uh, the unit thread in the tire. So it's, it's very secure. It does lower the ground clearance quite a bit, but this has the Explorer package. So it was already pretty high and we're pulling this with an SUV. The SUV has a lower ground clearance than this. So, you know, this isn't affecting us uh, a whole lot. It might be for you if you have a truck in which case you might throw that tire in your bed and call it a day. Here are the uh, upgraded tanks. Now you can get you can get the 30 pound tanks, this auto switching regulator, and the longer piece of all thread, and even the uh, the, the tray to, to mount it all packaged. Uh, it's probably the best way to go. It's the most cost effective. The gas regulator that came with the trailer, you get to manually switch between tanks. And so in the middle of the night, you could run out of gas and then you start to have a cold night and wake up pretty pretty cold depending where you are uh, this one will automatically as one runs out will switch over to the other i also installed the mopika uh, sensors that will let me know and monitor the gauge and you can barely see the little rubber outline of the uh the halo that allows the, the spacing that the sensor needs so that it doesn't get damaged and being rubber what i like about it is that it doesn't scratch up and start to rust a lot of times this stuff starts to look kind of you know rusted and, and not not very good so again the the 30 pound tanks and the tire added a lot of weight over here on on the on the coupler and on the tongue but i was able to balance that by putting the generators and the extra propane bottles in the back such that overall i'm still in that 11 to 15 percent uh total weight up front but i'm not exceeding the weight of the tow vehicle that's it all right, I wanted to cover a few more things that I missed. Uh, so right here, you'll see the Anderson weight distribution, anti sway pitch. It seemed to be the best product. We were convinced the way to go. We went ahead and installed it. We haven't hit the road yet. We're about to do a you know, 2000 mile, uh, 15 day road trip. So we'll let you know afterwards if, if we think it, it lived up to all the hype. But you know, for now, it installed reasonably well. We're excited and we'll see how it goes. Also over here, I, I didn't cover, but we have we went and got these X chocks. If you have a dual axis uh, trailer, definitely seems the way to go. The normal wheel chocks allowed for a lot of play. These you put on, and I mean, it it locks down. It does not move. We love it. The other thing that you might not be able to see very well, I went ahead and got a, a TPMS system. And this is great because with all four tires, I'm able to monitor the pressure in the dash. And I got the fast responding tab. So if I have a blowout, you know, fast leakage, it immediately alerts me, I can pull over and, and swap out with a spare tire. You'll also see the Anderson style um, levelers. This combined with the Level Mate Pro, which I mounted in here. We'll cover the interior here in a second, but oh, um, you can see if you come in here, um, I went ahead and put the Level Mate Pro right there. It has good line of sight to the tow vehicle. Um, and conveniently there's USB access right here. So it stays powered on the whole time. I don't got to worry about connecting and all that kind of stuff. But between the Level Mate Pro and the Anderson style levelers, I should be able to level this thing pretty quick. Um, we're looking forward to that. You'll also see right here, the uh, Mopika uh, gauge, which, you know, we're able to be able to hit. And then eventually it'll just tell me that, you know, I'm full on both tanks. I just, I just filled them up. So it's a, it's a pretty convenient. And that again goes with the sensors that I have under the 30 pound uh, tanks up front. I'm not putting sensors on the ones in the rear because those will be pulled out uh, when used. And because they're 20 pounds, I can use one of those hand scale gauges, which I have. Um, that'll also be linked on all the other products. So that's it for the outside. I just want to show you all how I mounted the, the tanks in the back over here. So this was the original 12 pound uh, tanks and the little uh, tray for them. You kind of got to get them in place such that if you wanted to, this does close. And you can see it's it's pretty close. This little uh, reinforcement member is in between this uh, propane tank and that little uh, T-handle, but it all fits well. We're not gonna have anybody sleeping here with the tanks in there. So we're gonna take these out um, every time somebody's gonna sleep in there. But you know, if you don't have anybody riding back here, uh, you can definitely, you know, just kind of do that and the extra propane would allow us to run the generators to, to do dry camping a little bit longer um, also again putting some weight in the rear is offsetting the extra weight that i put up 
in the front, the extra coming from the 30 pound uh, propane tanks and the tire. So I just wanted to show y'all how I did that. I want to show y'all what the mounted generators look like. Here you'll see one that's mounted, it's secured down, it's locked up, and it's got this little uh, cover on. Some of the reviews said that the cover may not last as long as you'd like it to. I think the people that were having trouble um, had their generators mounted up front where they were directly getting hit with the wind. Hopefully this will last a little bit longer. I guess time will tell. Here you'll see I haven't put the cover on and I put two straps. It goes up underneath the bumper so it kind of holds the whole thing together. One strap would probably do, but two seem like a good idea. They're pretty cheap. Um, so it's, a, I guess, a cheap form of insurance there. And then over here, you'll see, you know, pretty standard um, cable lock with the, with this master lock here. It's, you know, case hardened. It seems like it's somewhat cut resistant. I like this little, uh, this little cover because that makes it a little brain, dirt, grime resistant to where the key hopefully won't have trouble going in there. You know, all of this stuff can be cut through um, the lock can, the cable can, but you know what, this plastic handle I mean, you could take a hacksaw to that and, and cut through it pretty quick. So um, nothing is going to be absolutely uh, theft proof, but hopefully this is enough to deter somebody from just grabbing and walking off uh, with one of my generators. So that's it. So uh, one last thing, I, I keep forgetting a, a few things here, but up there you'll see uh, the video camera that we went with. We chose to go with uh, a generic brand one, not the, uh, the Y-Sight brand products that and the fusion seem a little overpriced for what they are so this seems to be working pretty well wired it in um, you can see i screwed it on to the to the cover that was there and then i just siliconed all the holes and it's it's working great so i wanted to go over again some of the things here i call this the control center but this little guy is great because you know you can put a phone in there or you can put keys hanging from here wallet all kinds of stuff maybe a little medicine bottle or two Again, here's a Level Mate Pro, great line of sight. I, I did the, the signal test strength before making it official and mounting it there. Um, most of these things, including this, this, and the Mopika tag sensor, I'm sticking with the uh, the Gorilla double-sided sticky tape. I'm using the, the black colored one. It's like the heavy duty, extra strength one. Again, I'm gonna link all the products in the description. So if you guys wanna buy any of this stuff, it should be pretty easy to get to. Down here, I wanted to go over a couple more security products that I decided to get. So I've got the, the master lock brand, the coupler lock, the hitch lock, and the latch lock all in one. What I like, it has the same keys because what ends up happening is um, you'll end up with a bunch of little keys and you're kind of fumbling through different keys for different things. So this allows all the things up front to have the same key. Uh, the generator locks, I bought a twin pack so that way they share the same key as well. Um, and this one, I got a last minute item. It's a, it's a smaller wire. It's a lot longer. This is to lock up the tables and chairs and maybe the grill propane tank. If you set things up outside and you're worried that, you know, they might walk off on you, you can just pretty easily run that cable through everything and lock it up to the trailer and probably sleep a little better at night. Or if you're gonna go a day excursion, go on one of the, the hikes somewhere. Over here in the kitchen, you're gonna see this, uh, the Camco uh, Papa plate. This is great. Um, it's right here out of the way. Again, it's mounted with just double-sided sticky tape, no drilling. Um, you know, making holes in, in your new cabinets. Uh, over here, paper towel dispenser. Again, uh, Gorilla double tape. This stuff's been on there. It's already survived the trip, so we're feeling pretty good about it. Uh, here, an induction burner. This is for, you know, for, if we have full hookup and we're not wanting to burn through our propane and we're doing a little bit of light cooking, single thing, uh, we're probably going to use this guy. We are, of course, equipped with, um, you know, three propane burners. So whether you're dry camping or you just like cooking with gas, it's right there. Uh, right here, we went with the uh, the Magma full set. So what I like about this is that it's fully nested. So all the all the pots and pans, you know, they're just I mean, it's like a Russian doll. I mean, they they all fit in there, and they've got these little pads so they don't scratch each other while you're bouncing around on the road. Um, and the handles are detachable. That's probably what allows it to take up such little space. And what I did, you know, I just kind of kept the, the box that it came with. Let's see. I think that goes like this. It actually goes like this. There we go. Yeah, I kept it all in the box that it came with. So that way, uh, when we're on the road again, things aren't bouncing around and hitting each other. It seems to fit real snugly right in there. And then the handles just kind of go there in the corner. That's how they ship it. And I just thought, man, that's a great way because it, it clears the cabinet just right. 
And then here I got some towels. These things we actually got at, at Target. Um, they work great. They're they're plastic, BPA free, all that kind of stuff. So microwave safe. We just have a few uh, plates there. We have a lot more, but since only three adults on this trip, we're only taking three. Over here, this took me, this is a, man, this is a great find. This little organizing tray fits just perfectly. Let me get this knife out of the way. I mean, it is so snug. You can see there's just no gap. Um, and here you can organize. We're gonna put some silverware and some plastic disposable because we're doing mixed dry camping and full hookup. On the dry camping, we're gonna use disposable so we don't have to wash and waste water. But this allows you to have, you know, a bit of both. What I love about this is that this comes right out. And here, you know, we have all of our cooking utensils. These little dividers, excellent investment. What I like about it is not only does it separate everything and keep it organized, is that it, it gives a little platform for this guy to sit right on top. And man, that's just great use of the stage. So you got your silverware and, and your cooking utensils all in one drawer, easy to get to. Love it. Now over here, underneath the sink, this was another good find. This guy right here, this is a great, great buy. What I like about it is this plastic clip is very snug on the cabinet. We tried a couple other ones that were loose and so they would rattle around. The majority of them had two hooks and because of the handle, it would get in the way. We needed one that was in the center and would drop this down enough to be able to clear this part of the cabinet. You can see it barely clears. This is great. I'm very happy with this buy. So, I mean, it is plastic, so you know, you gotta kinda gingerly handle it. If you hang if you hang on it, it's gonna break. So, you know, just be careful with it. And I think, I think that's gonna last us a good while. Um, over here in the bunks, this over here is a, a USB elbow. So rather than having the, the USB wire come down and, and get in somebody's face, uh, this this guy will allow you to you know direct the cable that way towards the wall. And this little wall mount, you can hang an iPad, an iPhone, you know whatever you want, and it should you know it's better than it being in the the sleeping area because then somebody get tangled up with the wire and it just seems kind of annoying. Uh, the bathroom, we got a variety of things going on here so we tried we tried sticking this to this wall didn't really work this wall's got a bit of a texture and so we think the texture is what caused this so i'm probably gonna have to screw this in uh, which is unfortunate we're trying to avoid permanent decisions in case we don't like things we want to be able to rearrange things i get the small little trash can right here just to be able to put diapers feminine products you know things that you really shouldn't be flushing down the toilet that will normally have a grocery bag so at the end of the day you know we take it out and, and put it in the dumpster um, we got a bunch of these uh, command, the, the 3M command strip hooks. Be able to hang loofahs, maybe towels, a number of things. This is also, I think, a great buy. Um, you hang your toothbrush right in here. And so this allows you to hang up to six uh, toothbrushes. There's three different cups. You also have space up here to put, um, you know, toothpaste, a razor, you know, a number of little sort of bathroom accessories. Now we're going to go over here to the uh, the master bedroom, if you will. And we got one of the mattresses here just to show you another product. So as y'all know, the uh, the twin bunks on, on these uh, travel trailers are not actual twins. Uh, ours is, I think, 28 by 75. So we put twin sheets, but they, they end up kind of loose and big. So what you can do, you can buy these um, products that will pull the, the sheets tight so that way things aren't loose. You know, they, they come several to a box and so that, that's what we're doing. And it seems to be a, a pretty good solution because it, you know, you kind of do that, you, you tuck it and you and you set it down and it, it seems to stay pretty tight. So we're doing that on all the mattresses. Um, over here, this is just a little electric heater from Amazon. I like that it's got the little safety switch. So whether it falls forward, back to the side, that'll turn it off. This we plan to use, we got two little ones. These are low power, 500 watt. So if we have full hookups, and again, we don't want to be burning our propane if, if we're mixed, you know, dry camping full hookup, uh, this gives us an option to hook up electric heaters, you know, for the night. And we can have both little ones, you know, one in the middle, you know, based on our comfort. Uh, they don't have a thermostat or anything, so it's going to be an on-off kind of situation, but um, it's an option. It's a cheap option that we decided to get. And I think that's about it for the, the interior stuff. I just want to point out a couple other items that I missed. So we got these uh, these rubber liners. Um, they're gray, so they really match the interior decor, and hopefully this will help keep things from sliding around as much. Um, so that's another item I would recommend getting. 
Over here, you'll see some uh, coat hanger hooks that are just stuck on. We got these because they're they're actually recommended by another YouTuber. I'll link their video, but they're low profile, so they clear the slide out. So we put a bunch up here, um, and then a couple down here. We got little kids, so we're hoping that these are able to get to so they can hang their little coats. And another item, uh, we got this uh, griddle. This is a cuisine art product. I got it because it's a um, it's a stainless. Uh, I think it's a an some sort of a ceramic coated aluminum. So the aluminum, you get the heat distribution, the ceramic coating, pretty safe surface, non-stick, and then stainless. Um, it's a magnetic type, so it can be used on the induction burner or on the propane. So uh, that's for pancakes or tortillas or what have you. Now, in, in both of these, there's plenty of storage. And this one over here, we basically have spare stuff, a spare sewage hose, spare water regulator, um, extra toilet paper, paper towels, you know, all those kind of accessory things that you would normally have in a kitchen somewhere. We have that just stocked full of that. Um, the the actually electric heaters uh, live in there as well. And this one, we're going to have games and things that we can get to quick access. Not too sure what else to do with the storage just yet. Underneath this storage, which is the uh, the pass through, um, the pass through outside accessible storage, this is where we're going to put our, our dirty laundry. So we got a, you know, just a pretty plain generic bag. I know some people will hang these somewhere inside, but we didn't find a good spot because these, these things are kind of big and they might smell. So we didn't, we wanted those, you know, a little separated from us. What I liked about this one is that you can put it on like a backpack, you know, it makes it a little easier to, to walk. Um, and it's got a really big open top. It's machine washable. So if it starts to get a funny odor, you can just throw it in the wash with everything else. Um, so, yep, that's about it.